Okay, this is the last video. So it's strategies to build resistance with these subtopics are reshoring, crowdsourcing, and then new technologies. So cybersecurity and passports, e-passports. So reshoring is when transnational corporations bring their production back to the country where it was originally based. It's an attempt to make countries more self-sufficient and also bring jobs back to the home country, thereby reducing high levels of unemployment. So it increases resilience because it seeks to enhance national employment and wealth um, and labor costs in countries such as China are actually on the rise so it's kind of reducing the cost of production um, and in the textile business in the long supply chain it can be difficult for companies to adjust to changes in fashion quickly um, however it can be difficult to find workers locally who pass drug tests and basic mathematical tests for the job examples are President Trump's bringing my um, promising to bring manufacturing back to the US, um, such as companies from the ch from China and Mexico, and also by cutting corporation tax. And then US, Apple, um, they began to assemble the MacBook Pro in Texas, um, and with the components made around the US instead of from China and Asian countries, um, to increase because uh, abroad the wage costs were increasing, so it was you know taking a lot of um, income from the company um, and also Brexit so there's this encouragement of reshoring to bring back employment there too. Okay, then we have crowdsourcing so this is the use of internet and social media platforms to get information from the public about their needs and wants. Governments and individuals have used it to both gauge and influence public opinion. Crowdsourcing is possible through Facebook, Twitter and a range of other apps. It is also it's a blend of traditional top-down production and bottom-up user production. Okay, so examples, U.S. Uh, Obama's presidency, so the open style of government encouraged crowdsourcing as a way of acquiring and sharing knowledge, such as local meetings, um, and local meetings became impractical and not the best way of sourcing information. You are also the discovery and organization of, um, of information. So the government has done different surveys about earthquakes and um, police departments have used it for eyewitness, eyewitness accounts, videos from the public. Um, LSC has used it for engaging people under the age of 35 to try and influence Brexit negotiations. And there's also crowdfunding, which is where the online communica communica com community <laughs> starts a fund, funds a startup for a company or a charitable cause or organization. Um, and then we have new technologies. So first of all, we're going to look at cybersecurity. So this is a set of technologies used to protect computer networks and organizations from indiv from individuals or rogue nation states. So it has become a big issue as the world has globalized um, and it makes cyberspace more vulnerable. So our data has to be protected. Um, and there's also the development of cyber currencies like Bitcoin and um, they're, you know, gaining a lot of more users and um, there's also some dangers there as well as it's kind of unknown. So an example of cybersecurity in the USA, so the US Secret Service maintains electronic crimes task forces which tracks down people who try to hack into banks and data banks. The US Immigration and Customs Enforcement um, uses it to target to um, mitigate child exploitation and smuggling and trafficking. Um, and then banking cybersecurity, there were five cyber cyber attacks on UK banks in 2014. Um, so there's been this call for greater collaboration between banks and data sharing to kind of understand the issue more and re-innovate their, their systems. And then there's personal cybersecurity. So these are different ways that you can like prevent, protect yourself from cyber crime. So um, checking the URL, antivirus software, checking your emails properly that they're like official, um, and things like that. And then we have finally, um, oops, this is meant to be e passports. So e passports. Okay, e passports are a passport that contains a facial image as and biometric data about the individual. The data is stored on a on an electronic chip embedded in the passport, and the authorities can only retrieve the data when a person enters a country. So it builds resilience because it contains this information and makes it more difficult to forge a passport and um, the reader has to authentic authenticate itself with the chip inside the passport. So examples, the USA wish to implement a more secure passport system after the 9-11 attacks. EU um, issued a regulation in 2004 saying that everyone in the EU must have e-passports. Germany was the first one to do that. 
In Malaysia introduced them in 1998. US and Canada began sharing information about third country travelers in December of 2012. So that included a lot of personal data, um, criminal records, drug usage, all of that. However, there have been concerns about infringements of individual rights in both countries. There's also online visa systems where you have to stipulate which countries you visited as an individual and your activities there. In Russia, for example, you have to mention what countries you visited in the last 10 years. And um, yeah, and then in Europe, after the European migrant crisis, they made much more strict border controls. And uh, Sweden, they had very strict controls uh, for people coming from Denmark and Switzerland. They had much tighter um, movement in terms of migration and everything. <laughs> 